Who would have thought that a black child born in the 19th century in the periphery of Virginia would one day become a symbol of courage, freedom, and resistance? <laughs> Even though I was fed properly, which amazed the other slaves, I still suffered trials and heartache. You see, the horrors of slavery is not confined to freedom denied. It took away the only family that I had. Nancy. Oh, Nancy, beautiful Nancy. Our love was true. Our love was pure. But it wasn't pure in the eyes of the law. It was illegal, but I did not stop us from building a family. Three beautiful and wonderful children, beautiful just like their mother. Beautiful Nancy was pregnant with our four. And that's when it happened. In 1840, Nancy's master decided to sell 350 slaves. Nancy and my children included. I had this idea of being shipped in a box and conveyed as dry goods and sent to a free state. It's crazy, I know. James Anthony Smith. <laughs> he was a free black man. He helped me. Now he knew this gambler called Samuel Smith. And even though he was white, he had sympathy for us black people. He knew it was wrong the way we were being treated. Now Samuel Smith had connections in some high places. He consulted with the members of the Pennsylvania Anti-Slavery Society to devise the exit strategy. <laughs> Crazy, I know. I folded myself into the box and it was nailed shut and marked this side up with care. It was then shipped off to the Adams Express Company where they were supposed to send me away. Hours upon hours. Upon more hours. It felt as though my eyes were swelling and we're gonna burst from their sockets. The veins of the temples on my head were dreadfully swollen with blood and pressure upon my head. I felt a cold sweat coming over me that seemed to be a warning that death was about to terminate my earthly miseries. 27 hours. I arrived in Philadelphia, still in the box. From there, the box was sent over to the Quaker merchants and abolitionists, William Still and Lewis Thompson. They opened the box and I gathered all the strength that I had left in me, stood up and said, how do you do, gentlemen? I waited patiently on the Lord and he inclined onto me and heard my cry. He pulled me up out of that miserable pit, out of the miry clay and set my feet upon the rock. He established my goings. He hath placed in me a new song and even more praises unto our God. Many more will see it, will fear it and trust in the Lord. Blessed be the man that maketh the Lord is trust and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. <laughs>